Hello. <coughs> How's everybody doing tonight? What up, Math Raptor ED? I got um, Lonesome Hunters on the desk tonight. Usually by this time of night, I would be um, much further along on this page, but it has been a day of hard drive troubles. So I've been running back and forth between my page and, uh, and my computer. It's been very frustrating, but hopefully if I can get a little bit caught up, and you can see how I do my uh, Lonesome Hunters pages. Hey, Kelly. <coughs> and I thought maybe I would try to describe a little bit about what I do in the course of the day to finish a page and um, and where I'm at. And I don't know how, I don't know how much sense it'll make just looking at this page where it's at, but hopefully it will. So I start off where I have inked my panel borders. I usually do that um, when I start uh, inking and coloring an issue. I'll uh, I'll go through, print them all out, print because I pencil on on the computer in Clip Studio, and I'll print them all out, and then I'll ink all the panel borders boop, boop, boop. and then I use this guy <clears throat> it's got a little cup you fill it up with ink and then boop, boop, boop. it makes perfect even lines very black very beautiful um, and then I'll mask off my page I use fat masking tape on the edges and then I go through and I've been using some three millimeter washi tape for the inside for like inside my panel gutters and that has been working amazingly well and then uh, the next thing I do is I ink the whole thing in brown ink and you can see that pretty clearly on some of these like how it's just brown ink there. And then I'll go through and I'll start doing all the local colors. So like all the skin tones, everyone's like this guy's little purple outfit gets painted purple. And then, you know, just all the, the local colors. <clears throat> oh, you know, I forgot a step. I'll usually do, before I start doing local colors, I'll do a color wash on the whole thing. Um, in this case, it's sort of a an orangey brown, a very light orangey brown. But you can kind of see that, like this is still the the beginning wash, just sitting there. And like in these lit up lights, I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but these are just slightly browny orange color. And then I do my local color, <clears throat> and then. I go in and start doing shadows on everything. And it's like, it's not like the best way to do a painting, but it is a very sort of efficient way to do a comic book page, especially when you have to, um, you know, tear through the whole page. I usually try to do, once a page is penciled and the panel borders are inked, I try to paint and finish inking it um, in a day. And usually, you know, it'll take between six and 10 hours to do that. Sometimes, you know, usually averaging close to, to eight hours to do the whole thing. Yeah, so the point where I'm at now is I'm about to start doing my black ink over the top of this. 
And um, as I'm doing that, I usually use uh, washes of black ink to sort of um, reinforce the shadows and, and stuff like that. Yeah, so that's where I'm at. <clears throat> and it's always a tough decision to decide where I'm going to start inking. Like, um, I usually want to start with the panel that looks the best, but that's the one that needs the least amount of work, so I should hold off. Oh, thanks, Edie. Yeah, I, um, it's been a very slow evolution. Um, like when I started doing Harrow County and was painting that those pages, um, I would ink the whole page in black first, and then I would color over the top of it, and it was um, it was pretty good, pretty effective. And then about halfway through that, I started doing uh, I would ink the whole thing in black, and then I would do the color wash over the whole thing before going in and doing more colors because I found that it um, doing that initial wash really sort of unified the whole image, like the whole page in a nice way. And it made me, um, it was just nice to get rid of all of the, the white on the page because I can bring, like I want to bring back highlights of white at the end but um so it's good to get rid of it all at the beginning um yeah and then when i did the when i did the colonel weird black hammer series i started doing a uh, sort of an initial gray ink pass before coloring and then did a black ink pass at the end real similar to what I'm doing now but um, instead of using a brown ink I was using um, uh, gray and now I'm using the brown and I guess the brown is just something that I had landed on trying random stuff for covers really um, if you look back at some of my Harrow County covers I worked in a similar way oh you know what and there were harrow county flashbacks that i did like that where i inked it in brown and then i would just sort of you know lay in a few random blacks here and there well not random but you know what i mean i would sort of find the blackest blacks and sort of ink those so yeah i don't know it's just a slow evolution of like trying things and trying to improve page over page until you get something that works. It's a little bit, um, I don't know. It's got, having a technique like this has pros and cons because on the one hand, it's a really nice way. Like I know, for instance, like I need to have my page, the brown ink and the color wash done um, around noon if I'm going to finish the page in the day. So I have like sort of page like points in the page where I know I got to hit at a certain time in order to get it done that day without having to work late. Um, so as a production thing, it works really nice, but at the, then on an artistic level, sometimes I wish I had a little bit more of a free form workflow. Yeah, there's a lot of good arguments for uh, inking the panels in order, Math Raptor. They, um, uh, Milton Kniff was really big on that. He was like, 
you got to start at the upper uh, left and work your way across so that you don't smudge. But um, I flip my page over too much in the process that it doesn't even make sense, like, which way I'm going. I try to work um, like 10 till, till 7 or 8 is my usual work thing. I try to um, try to be in the studio by 10, like in the studio and working. Um, but my workday like involves like, you know, emails and shit like that. <laughs> so like... I don't get to draw like all day long as much as I as much as I would love to. And like for example today I spent like hours just trying to figure out hard drive problems. Oh thanks Edie. The I think the brown um the brown down first technique was a sort of an adaption of like how people paint. Cause you know, it's like with oil and acrylic painting, it's real common to do like a, an underpainting that's just in burnt umber or something. And I think that's probably where I got the idea to start working like that. And I've said it in previous streams, but I like doing a color line first because it um, it just adds a little more excitement. The um, the Colonel Weird pages, I think, um, it gave it really nice depth and stuff. But um, yeah, just seeing the different colored lines on top of one another just seems a little more spicy to me. I like it. Yeah, man, I wish you guys could see my table. It is um, my pride and joy. It's one of those, it's a drafting table, so it tilts, but it's also on a motor, so it can be a standing desk or a sitting desk. And right now I'm sitting but um, usually I'll sort of stand for the first half of the day and then sit down for the second half of the day. And it's nice. It gives me like a, it feels almost like a power boost because I'll be standing here and be feeling exhausted, you know, around like two or three in the afternoon. And then I sit down and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, I have so much energy again. But the trick to getting this desk was that I had to check out Craigslist um, two or three times a day for about six weeks. And then, because um, they come up kind of regular, like I, I think I paid $150 for this thing. It's like an old 60s Mayline. Actually, you know what? I bet it's an 80s Mayline desk. Um, yeah, they come up all the time, but they disappear right away. So I had to be like the guy on point, like sniping, ready to snipe. Yeah, Austin, that um, that's a very similar process to how I did the Nita Hawes cover. That one, though, if I remember right, I did different my initial inking pass had different colors um, for like the foreground and the middle ground and the background, which was partially because I was trying to really push those like, um, you know, those false colors. I have, if for anyone who's interested, I have a, a time lapse of that on my channel somewhere. You can find it and watch it. Um, math raptor for my airbrush, I use acrylic ink. 
I use the same ink that I um, am painting with. I used to just run watercolor through my airbrush, um, but it's like airbrushed watercolor is very reactive. It lands on the paper and it forms like a almost a powder on it. So it's like the slightest bit of liquid hits it and it will just move the the airbrushed paint around like crazy and um so it's tough to it's tough to use <laughs> oh my gosh hey tyson hello whole clark family and christine i miss you guys too i hope you're doing good Hey, Bill, thanks. Hey, Pippi Pop. I do use a air compressor for my airbrush. Um, yeah, I have tried using the cans before and um, you know, they work great. They're nice and quiet, but um, it just sucks to have, um, um, what would you call that? It's like those K-cups. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, I don't, I'm trying to, trying not to fill up the landfills as best I can. Yeah, my, um, I don't know what brand of uh, air compressor I use. I got it at a, like a hobby shop for, I think I paid 80 bucks for it or something. It was really cheap. It's not the quietest thing in the world, but um, it's not super loud either. It did suck when I was, um, when we were living in an apartment, when I had to like run the airbrush, because sometimes it would be, you know, if I'm working late, it would be midnight, and I'm like, oh, no, sorry. I'm just going to run it real quick, neighbor. I tried for a little while, too, to instead of using an airbrush to use... Um, uh, what do they call those markers? We've had this conversation before, but those, um, you can buy a little airbrush adapter to go on like an ink marker. And those things work really good, but they don't only, but they really fight with, um, with the watercolor. There's something about the alcohol in the ink that like affects the the paper and then when you put the watercolor paint over it it just um it just doesn't behave properly it gets all weird on you Topic markers, that is correct. Those are the guys I'm talking about. Oh man, the commissions are coming along <laughs> very slowly. Man, I am so grateful that the people who commissioned me are so um, patient. So I got basically the, um, I got the uh, Thanos commission most of the way penciled. Um, 
I needed to go through on it and do like a do like a pass to figure out my lighting on it a little bit better. Um, but actually, hold on a second. Let me grab it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. But there's the pencils for it. So I'm going to do what I need to do still is go through and work out a little bit more about the how the lighting is going to work on it. And then um, does that help at all? And then uh, then I can print this out and, and paint. Hey, comic crack, C crack. Those iPads are a wonder. I still got my, have we talked about how badly I want like a 25 inch iPad? <laughs> yeah, big money. I think that, um, like, doing it for a living, I think it's totally worth it. Like, there's, I haven't found anything that really compares to an iPad as far as um, digital drawing goes. I think it's the the best. Like, I have a, um, a Cintiq, um, a 20, it's, I think it's a 24-inch or a 26-inch, and... Um, it stinks compared to my iPad. As far as like the pen pressure, like the and the pen sensitivity and stuff. But my iPad's only it's just that 12 inch thing and it's it's so tiny. It can sometimes be a real struggle. Yeah, what I want is uh, something that's big enough that I can just set it on my like drawing table, which I guess is what I do now with my iPad. But um, I want it to feel like I'm drawing actual size. Oh, this, the page I'm working on is a page from uh, Lonesome Hunters, from the next story arc. I was a little bit worried. I always get worried about spoilers for people who are, like, excited for when the book comes out, but um, I don't think it's any surprise that the Tina, I mean, or the character I'm inking right now, Tina, that she returns, and um, and you guys will just have to see who this beardo guy is. Yep, 
Yeah, the next arc has well, Tina here has been was in the um, the first story arc, but um, Beard Guy is new. There's a bunch of new characters in this arc. Very excited for this to get back out into the world. It kind of working on a book all by yourself like this takes so long. And I really worry about people forgetting that the Lonesome Hunters exists. But the trade comes out uh, next month. which will hopefully remind people. Hey, Mark. The next Lonesome Hunters story arc will be the, the same. Dark Horse basically just does those four issues minis nowadays like that seems to be their their default so i'm sort of trying to work within that um that framework for this of a series of four issue mini series and i'm hoping that the whole thing will be uh 24 or 32 issues um almost the same size as uh um harrow county We'll see if um, it's one of those things where it just totally depends on enough people sticking with the series. And it's challenging with such big breaks in between uh, story arcs. It's basically like, like I might be able to do this book um, coming out every other month, but... Um, But Dark Horse, I haven't been able to convince anyone that that's a good idea. They sort of want it to come out every month and then take four months off and then have a new number one. Yeah, I hope we can get a, a library edition for this. So anyway, if you're um, if you want to make sure that the book can keep coming out, make sure you pre-order with your local comic shop. The Lonesome Hunters trade.
Um, Dark Horse has basically like the the process for doing a book with Dark Horse is that, um, or at least for me, I'm, I'm sure it's different for different people and different editors, but um, I pitch it to my editor and he pitches it to the rest of the editorial team and the marketing team. Um, and they decide if they want to, if they want to, um, you know, publish it. And then, uh, but as far as like the exact content of the book, basically because it's a creator owned book, they only tell me like, um, uh, like give me editorial notes, but I basically have the final say on, on everything. I mean, even, um, I mean, even if I wanted to fight them on copy editing, I could if I wanted to, but I would have to be kind of a, a goober to, <laughs> to fight with them too much about copyright or yeah, copy editing. Daniel Shaban and um, Chuck Howitt are my editors. Oh, and um, Misha. Oh, geez. I'm spacing on Misha's last name. Um. So there's a whole team of like editors working on this, which is nice. I like to have as much, as many eyes on it as I can get. I even make poor Ma'at read all my books before I turn them in. And they always find things for me to fix. <laughs> nice Kelly. I think I think every um I think everyone in America should have three copies of the Harrow County trade paperback. Honestly, write your senator and tell them that we that you need that. I like those library editions just fine. I think they're they're beautiful, but um, man, as far as like reading, I don't think they're really like. It's just not the reading experience I like. They're just too big. Books books that size are hard to hard to read in bed. Yeah, like there's, it's amazing how often um, errors s slip through and make it all the way, even with lots of professionals. Especially just undoing um, books that come out so fast. And that's a huge reason why, um, like when you work in book like the regular book trade for, um, you know, with publishers like, I don't know, Penguin or whatever, they will, um, you'll finish a book and it won't come out for a year and a half or two years. But when you work on a comic, usually the, um, the time from when I, like, <laughs> so on a regular series like this, on a four issue series like this, the first issue will come out, um, you know, like three or four months after I've drawn it. And then by the time the last issue comes out, it's coming out like just a few weeks after I've turned it in. Although lead times have gotten a lot longer um, now that we have more uh, book distributors. And also just the um, supply chain stuff. Although the the monthly um, magazine books come out 
or they're public or they're printed in um, either the U S or Canada. So like the supply chain isn't so bad, but the, um, the trades are usually printed in China or in Korea, which can really slow down a book. I and mean, there's so many books like the, the new Petrograd came out, like the new edition of Petrograd came out last year and, um, they had to push the release back by a week because it was just sitting on a dock and nobody could take it out of its crate and get it on a onto a truck. Thanks, Austin. I um feel like I'm doing okay. <laughs> I could always get stand to be compensated more. But as far as like making comics for a living goes, I think I'm doing all right. Like I have a mortgage and we've been able to pay it. Which is pretty fortunate. <laughs> talking and drawing at the same time is sometimes hard I was re-watching one of my um, one of the live streams the other day and was like kind of surprised at how much time I spend not talking at all
Yeah, this is like a uh like a new age shop. She sells a lot of crystals and like incense and stuff. Yeah, Pippi Pop, that's exactly why I switched. I wanted to um, get a little bit of a finer line. And the um, quill will let me do that. It's almost like it's not so much like the thickness of the line that a quill gives you, but rather like a tightness of curve that you can't get with a brush as easily. I don't know if that makes any sense. Oh, hey, hey, it's off the page games. I assume that's Jay, right? If anybody who is curious off the page games is a incredible games publisher and they are coming out with a harrow county board game that was kickstarted uh, last year and uh, to much success i don't remember when it's coming out though maybe jay can say in the chat Oh, so you can pledge for the Harrow County board game right now. By October. So if anybody would like to check out the Harrow County game, that's a probably a good opportunity to go grab it.
<laughs> the game is incredibly spoopy. Um, I have not played it for a while. I am. I have limited board game patience. Much to poor Maat's chagrin. But I think it is good. I think that it is a good game, and it's got um, very flexible game um, gameplay scenarios. It's got, um, I can't even remember, like three or four different ways that you can sort of set up the game and play it. Um, so there's a lot of replay. I think the the guys that off the off the page are um, friggin' geniuses. I worked at I did video game work for years and years, and um, and I'm not a good game designer. It's something I've learned from that experience, and uh, these guys definitely are good game designers. It has some, I don't know if it has minis in the way that you're thinking, Math Raptor, but it definitely has um, uh, a couple characters that I actually did 3D sculpts for. But they're kind of like, a, they're almost like a chibi version of the characters. They're very cool. I am very excited for people to see them, actually. Bye, Pippi Pop. Good luck with your animation. And thank you so much for dropping by. Which part of the art process is my favorite? Pencils, watercolor, inking. I think, oof, that is tough. I like, like all the different parts of drawing a comic are different. Um, although I think more and more my uh, inking and watercoloring process is, it's sort of like one piece. Um, but I do definitely like the, I don't know, like when I'm doing the, um, the final art like this, where I'm doing the color and the, and the inking, it's very, uh, sort of meditative and chill. Um, when I'm penciling, I'm much more, uh, sort of engaged in figuring out what the storytelling is all about. 
and that can be a lot more um, I don't know what's the word like well I guess it's more difficult <laughs> it takes it just takes a lot more brain power to um, to do the penciling part than it does to do the the finished art part because by the time I start inking and painting the page like all of the really um, challenging decisions have been made for me like I figured out all the story stuff which is the hard part well, I guess almost all the story stuff a lot of times there's um, what I'm call like lots of times I'll pencil a thing and still not really know like how like what kind of colors I'm gonna use on it. Which is definitely part of the storytelling. So working out um, my color map for for a scene is sometimes um, pretty engaging. So I don't know. I like the whole process. The only part I don't care for really is scanning the final pages into the computer. That part of the process is always just a slog. Although I have managed to get it pretty quick nowadays. And I even do, I do so much like the way I mask off my panels and everything. Like the, main reason I do that is just to reduce the amount of computer time I have to put in on each page. Like I've discovered the washi tape for the panel gutters recently. And, um, it's like, that saves me about 10 minutes on each page, which isn't a whole lot, but it adds up just because I don't have to in Photoshop go through and, clean up all my panel borders anymore I mean sometimes I have to do it a little bit but also taking the tape off is the best part <laughs> when I when I make mistakes, I have a whole sort of arsenal of ways to um, 
sort of integrate the mistake so that it looks intentional. But because uh, like I make mistakes, well, I don't know. I I don't like calling them mistakes. I definitely um, have unintentional make unintentional marks constantly. Like I've probably made several dozen unintentional marks in the time that um, that this live stream has been running. But uh, most of the time, I just sort of roll with it. I am, um, like, I feel like, I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't know really exactly how to explain it. Like, I feel like the, my art process is not one where um, I'm deciding what I want it to look like and then making it look like that. I'm sort of, you know, making, um, trying to make it look like what I want and then reacting to what it starts to look like. It's a lot more, um, improv improvisational. I don't know if I want to call it improvisational. It's like I'm reacting to what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And it, um, even though I have a plan and I have a goal, I am, I sort of accept where the page wants to go instead of uh, where I want it to go. Kind of. And that's partially laziness on my part, but also partially like allows me to actually finish things. Because if I'm always trying to make everything exactly how I wanted it to be when I started, you know, I would still be working on my first book. Uh, but when I do screw up massively, usually what I do is um, I'll print out the pencils again and um, just start painting it and inking it again from scratch. Which happens pretty regular. Usually I'll have to do it, well, probably not on every single issue, but... Um, but almost on every single issue, I have to do at least one page like that. And then I have to combine, like I'll redo a, one panel and then in Photoshop, I'll combine it with the rest of the page that doesn't have a mistake on it. Yeah, I guess the the attitude I try to have is that doing a bad drawing is not necessarily a mistake. It's just a bad drawing. Which I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, somehow thinking about that helps me get through my day. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of happy accidents. Exactly. Like the only one who, the only person who knows what this page was supposed to look like or what any page is supposed to look like is me. So as long as I pretend like this is what I intended, then, um, then we're golden. When I'm writing, I am definitely writing um, with panels in mind. Like, um, I think often I'll actually have like 
uh, panels that I want to draw in mind. Like I have a, a scene that I want to look a certain way. And so, um, like that's sort of in my mind when I start writing. And so I write to, so I have that, so I can draw that basically. Um, but, um, I am trying to write, <laughs> it's funny. I do like a combo of full script and layouts as I write. So lots of times I will be drawing um, thumbnails of a page as I'm like, as I have like a word doc open at the same time and I'm typing dialogue and, and scene descriptions of what I'm thumbnailing at the same exact time. It's a little bit redundant, but um, it's been working for me. All right. Well, I think I'm going to call it quits on the live stream so I can focus on this. I think I'm going to end up having to finish this page this weekend, which is a little bit of a bummer, but that's what happens. So there we are. Thanks so much for uh, coming by, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the the stream, and I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you had a nice week and get to chillax a little bit. And uh, yeah, next week, uh, remind me next week, and I'll show you how this page turned out. Night, Ed. Night, Kelly. Good night, Jay. Good night, my Raptor. All right. Peace.